My master's degree is in orchestration and now there's a plugin that does the work for me. Let's discuss. Hey everyone, my name is Robert Rodriguez and I'm a media composer. If you're new here, I wanna invite you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. My goal is to make the music writing process as easy as possible for any new composer. East West Sounds just released a new product called Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition. And it's supposed to serve as a new and updated expansion for their original Hollywood Orchestra series. Different companies release new products all the time, but Opus Edition really stuck out because of a new feature called Hollywood Orchestrator. According to the East West website, Hollywood Orchestrator used all the instruments in Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition to create real-time arrangements based on your MIDI input. Basically, you just play a few simple chords with one hand and a complex arrangement can come out. Now this seems like the perfect tool for new composers or even anyone without a musical background. Before we dive into the orchestrator, let's first discuss how to even get started with Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition. So if you head on over to soundsonline.com, this is the East West website. One of the first things you'll actually see is them advertising the Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition. Let's scroll down. We can go to buy now. And there are a few different options that you can get. Let's stick with the standalone purchase. There is Diamond Edition and Gold Edition. So the Gold Edition is their baseline product. Their introductory offer is coming up at $6.95. This is probably gonna last for a few weeks, a month, give or take. It looks like their normal price would be $8.95. With the Gold Edition, you're gonna get one mic position and 16-bit samples. Compared to the Gold Edition, the Diamond Edition is gonna give you all the mic positions and 24-bit samples. And if we were to look at the price, the introductory offer is $7.95 and the standard pricing is $9.95, so almost $1,000. If you are looking to spend this much for an orchestra, then I would say it's definitely worth it to just get the Diamond Edition. It's gonna be $100 more, but you do get all of the mic positions. Alternatively, instead of making a single purchase like this, you can join the Composer Cloud subscription service. So let's head on over to purchase type subscription, and this will bring us to the Composer Cloud product. So let's go down here to click here to show all Composer Cloud plans, and let's just stick with individuals, but it's important to note that they do have educational discounts on the subscription service. The East West Composer Cloud is a subscription service that pretty much gives you access to almost all of the East West libraries. We'll discuss this a little bit more later in the video, but this is such a great option, especially for new composers. So their first plan is Composer Cloud X. It is a yearly plan that you can pay monthly or yearly, but you are locked in for the year. And this product comes in at $19.99. Also with Composer Cloud X, you're gonna be getting the gold collection of East West libraries. Typically the gold collection will give you that one mic position, but for being a subscriber, they're gonna give you a second mic position that you can work with. Now, if we take a look at Composer Cloud Plus, this is also a yearly plan, but you can pay it monthly or yearly. So you are locked in for that year. And this is gonna be $29.99 a month, but instead of the gold collection, you're upgrading to the diamond collection. So you're getting 24-bit samples and you are getting all of the mic positions. And then looking at the last option of Composer Cloud, this is just your monthly plan for $29.99. You're no longer locked in for the year. You can pay for one month, cancel the next, and then continue if you want to. The only thing with this final option is that you're getting the gold collection and it is only one mic position. So that's the difference compared to Composer Cloud X. And really quick, I just wanted to show you the prepay for one year option. So instead of doing the monthly payments, you can do it for $200 a year and $300 a year. So this is where you can save money compared to monthly payments. I think East West gives new composers one of the best and affordable ways to get started. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars per library without even knowing where to begin, you can get access to 
basically all of their libraries for 20 to $30 a month. This is such a great way to just get started, but to also slowly build your own permanent library. All right, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you have downloaded the Opus Engine, the Opus Samples, and the Hollywood Orchestrator. Okay, so you're gonna open up a new session. I'm a Logic user, so this is what this looks like for me. Under Instrument, I already selected it, but I would go down to the East-West folder, and I would pick Opus. I just usually pick a multi output just by habit and let's create it. So it pulls up the engine and we can see the different Hollywood instruments that it recognizes that the Opus engine will actually play. And this isn't a review on the Opus edition necessarily. We're focusing on the orchestrator here, but we'll also kind of see the samples that we get and how good they actually sound. So we can go on over here and it looks like it's just this one instrument, Hollywood orchestrator. So we will select that. And this is the blank instrument that we get loaded. There's nothing in it, no presets. But one of the first things that we see is that it's divided into four categories, the woodwinds, brass, percussion, and strings. So if we head on over to the preset browser, we'll see that there are four categories of presets. There's ensembles, ostinato, score, and user. So let's first start with the ensemble category. And we can see that this is broken down into strings long and short, winds long and short, brass long and short, percussion tonal and non-tonal. So basically pitch percussion versus non-pitched. Full ensemble long, short, and full ensemble movie. This is all very cool. I'm kind of interested to see what the ensemble movie is like. I feel like everyone's gonna pick Apocalypse 1. So let's go for Apocalypse 4. And so if we look at the instruments that are loaded on the side, so they're color coordinated, it looks like these yellow ones match the yellow brass. So it looks like that is six French horns, three trumpets, three trombones, and a low brass sustain. And then if I were to go to percussion, we see that it has timpani roll, bass drum, a mark tree, and this is purple purple. So let's go on over and we get purple. Great. Uh, I missed woodwinds, but that was up at the top. So that's blue and the strings are red and the strings are red down here. And so we got first violins, octave run up and down split, second violins, tremolo, violas, tremolo, celli, tremolo, and basses, tremolo. Okay. And so this is the perform tab. You have different tabs, the browse, play, and perform and mix. Right off the bat, one of the first things that grabbed my attention about the Opus edition was the new look of the Opus engine. It really has this sleek design. It's a matte black, gray. It looks like the instruments are on a stage, a very colorful palette. So if we go to soft, we get a blue, we get yellow with classic and epic is red. It's just a really nice design that just really catches the eye. So let's just play. Oh, I should put these on. What? What? Oh, that is so cool. So it's based on velocity. I'm doing a very soft touch. Let's go mid range. You get the tree, you get a mix of the brass and woodwinds and strings and percussion. And then the harder I hit, you get the string runs. And then if I adjust the mod wheel at the same time, it re, oh, wow. That is super cool. Wow, that is really nice. That is so cool. And I think what I like the most 
is that I can, I, I'm assuming I can change if I don't want that run, I can just add sustains or legatos. All right, so let's try sticking with a string ensemble patch, big legato. So let's go to the play tab. Let's try soft. Oh, it's... Right now it's mono. So this isn't big chords, this is just legato, um, but it looks like it covers the range of the orchestra. So if I were to go down here, you get your cellos and your basses. Oh. And it looks like this G is the bottom G of the violins. Uh, it's playing through the violas and the celli and the basses. So this is going to get everything. Okay, something like this seems very similar to a regular ensemble library. But what's kind of cool is that you can go in and change. It looks like you can go into this and do you want maybe spiccato so if you were to play the note so far all of the other instruments are doing legato except for the second violins which i assigned to spiccato and it is sounding a little funky because it's supposed to be legato Okay, so that's the ensembles of the preset browser. So now let's head on over to the ostinatos. This is the second preset category in the preset browser. I don't even know where to begin. Maybe eighth note 125 one. All right, so it looks like we have a full ensemble here. All right, so it looks like we can see what the strings are doing. Percussion is doing hits, drum, snare. No brass other than low brass trombone mute. Interesting. And woodwinds, so no flute or piccolo. English horn, clarinet, contra bassoon. Okay, so let's go to play. Let's stick with classic for now. And... Okay, so that was just a little bit of playing around, but wow, that was so easy. Let's try soft. Ooh, okay. I use action strikes, the native instruments action strikes, and those ensembles have a pre-assigned rhythm and you can go in and adjust the rhythm however you want. This is very similar to that, where the ostinatos are just kind of preset and it's cool that we can go in and adjust what we want. Okay, this is set so that the violin ones are an octave higher, so, I was playing a C4, but it was really coming out as a C5. The second violins are written and played the same, written and played the same. Celli, if I were to play a C3, it's coming out as a C2, and basses are two octaves below. Okay, but arranger mode, what if I were to do... Okay, so it's gonna take that top note.
let's check out another ostinato, maybe half note, whatever this is. So these are first violins, marcato, top two. I don't really know what the two means. Middle, lowest, an octave, lowest, lowest. Ooh. Wow, that's interesting. All right, I don't want to hear anything else. I just want to see what the strings are doing. I'm confused because it says top two, but it's playing the E. What if I were to make you an octave higher? No, it's playing the C, I just couldn't hear it. So you're playing the lowest. All right, I wanna mute all of you, just so I can hear the celli and the basses. Nice, very, very nice. Wow, okay, so this is very, very cool. What I'm liking so far is that they give you the preset and all of these instruments are set aside, but I can go in and change the octave and arrangement. So this is very, very cool. Let's check out the other presets. So the next category is scores. And when I was doing a little bit of research into just East West and when they were talking about this, they said that scores, this tab was going to be the most complex. I don't know what that means, but the planet, what's five, four, 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 three. Oh, is this just the time signatures? Yeah, probably. Let's stick with four, four for now. What? Wow, wow, oh, that is, oh, okay, think straight, think straight. This is, um, this is just so, so cool to just <laughs> have it at your fingertips and you can just get something out there. East West did say that their goal was to help composers write quickly. And it's just very inspiring. Like you can just start playing around and you hear it automatically in your head or rather out of your computer. So this is very easy to just start. It's so easy to start. So that was the planet that was in 4-4. Four, four. I'm curious to see 3-4. Very cool. I like the three, four feel, and I just wanna see. So we're still using basic articulations in the string, the percussion, timpani hits, we heard that. Bass drum, snare, we heard that, definitely. Cotto, shorts, woodwinds. So it seems like these are all shorts and they're programmed to have ostinatos already built in. So that is where the score is different than these two. It's almost like a combination of the two. Let's try dark, ooh, elves world. I don't, I don't know what that is. And so far, I'm just having a great time playing with this and it's just super inspiring. The difference so far that's coming to mind is I'm trying to listen to the different sections of the orchestra 
uh, and seeing how would this be written out. If I needed to get this to actual players, I need to listen and say, okay, violins are doing tremolos, woodwind. So this seems like a very long preset, but before we had all the shorts, I want to hear exactly what the piccolos and flutes were playing, what were the oboes doing, what were the tubas and low brass doing. So if I need to get this to a player, I would have to work that out and see exactly what was going on. But in terms of just quick writing, it doesn't really matter what's going on as long as it all makes sense. So let's hear Elves World. Oh. So definitely not as in your face as some of the other presets, but it definitely gives a nice texture, maybe to underscore a scene or something, but it's very, very nice to play. Okay, so that is scores, but if you take a look, they have Dark Hero, Black Knight, Hollywood Action, Infinity, Marching, Military, Family Comedy, motion, superhero, symphonic. Wow, I can't wait to just go through all of this. So I really want to see Dark Hero. So that's really nice. So now the next thing is probably to check out the user presets. It seems like nothing's loaded because we have to edit a preset of our own. I kind of want to just start small so I don't get too overwhelmed with all of this. Maybe close everything and just build ourselves. Oh no, I meant to just get an empty orchestrator. Okay, this, okay, this is what I wanted. So I don't wanna be, I wanna do strings alone and I just wanna build maybe violins legato. I wanna do violin to maybe spiccato, maybe viola legato, celli legato. Everything is just legato. Let's just stick with that. Maybe you staccato. So it's assigned to the middle, so that's, Good, we will draw in boom, 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 boom. And we wanna turn it on. Ah, that is very nice. So it goes from, because it's all in unison, it goes from the F all the way up to the, all the way up to the F. And because I'm only playing two notes, it goes from F to C to F, I believe. Very nice. And then if we were to just do a chord, because this is the middle note, it goes up to the C, it goes up to the F, down to the C, down to the A. Okay, when I was kind of looking at this, I didn't really understand what was going on here, if that was like a half step or a whole step, but it's nice to know that this is following the chord that you are playing. Okay, so I just created a little preset and I want to save it. How do I save it? Let's just try test one. So let's save. 
preset is valid. So that is test one. If I were to load up something else, get rid of what I just did and go to test one again, it takes what I did before. Awesome. So that is the orchestrator. The only other thing I feel like I haven't touched on is this, the mix. Not what I was expecting, but very nice, very intense. I was kind of expecting something like this on the side here, except vertical and on a mixer window. Oh, because this is the mix of the Opus engine, but if I'm in perform and go to mixer, that's what I was expecting. But it's very cool. I was not expecting this, where you can kind of adjust the frequency gain, uh, equalizer, anything like that. That is very nice. So back to perform, go to mixer instead of main, and you can adjust everything here. So I lowered the volume before, but if I were to do that, um, it changes it on the side there. Reverb, equalizer here as well, reverb. This is so cool. And we just did a preset of just the strings, but we can obviously add in woodwinds, brass, percussion. So this was very, very nice. I'm a fan, definitely a fan. I do have some final thoughts though, just to kind of wrap everything up. But overall, I'm very impressed with the orchestrator. I do have some final thoughts and I do wanna clarify some things when going through this. So did the Hollywood orchestrator just make my work and entire education obsolete? No, absolutely not, not even close. But am I still excited to play around with it and just make my workflow that much easier? Yes, 1000% yes. So let's just break this down a bit. Remember, their goal was to help composers write music in a very short period of time. Those presets are amazing and really inspiring when you wanna start writing music. One of my initial thoughts was that it felt like cheating because it was just so easy to use. But remember, if everyone is using these presets, everyone is gonna start sounding the same. So to combat this, you can go in and adjust those presets or create your own in the user tab. But the irony with this is that the more you go in and adjust, the closer you are to actually orchestrating. That's because you're gonna be making decisions on how you want to arrange the different instruments in the orchestra. Another thing is that this is an East-West product, so it's limited to the East-West Hollywood library. Now that's not too big of a deal for composers that are solely using the Composer Cloud or no other samples from other developers. But if you're not using Composer Cloud and you do have a bunch of different libraries from other companies, then the orchestrator is only going to affect a small portion of your actual music. You're still going to need to know how to write and orchestrate for other samples, which is why I think there is value in actually taking the time to learn and understand orchestration techniques. So I highly suggest reading The Study of Orchestration by Samuel Adler so you can get a great understanding of why and how instruments work. And I've left a link for that in the description down below. So for any new composer just looking to get started, this is an incredibly powerful and educational tool. And if you don't have a music background, you could just analyze the presets to get a basic understanding of orchestration. And then for seasoned composers, this is perfect for quick, textured elements that go along with your other samples. So much of our work has to be done quickly and efficiently. It might not solve every single one of our problems, but it's also not meant to. It just has so much potential to speed up your workflow. So let me know if you got value today. If you did, definitely consider giving this video a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. And if you're new to composing, I wanna invite you to check out some of my other videos on the channel. We cover everything from music theory to composer tips to my orchestral template. I also want to give you a free downloadable reference guide that'll help you start composing in almost any genre for TV, film, and games. I left a link for that in the description down below. So thanks for stopping by and happy composing.